When the switch in your controller doesn't work, how can you tell what's broken and how to fix it? I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. Here's the situation that we're gonna troubleshoot in this video. You've got a switch on your controller that's supposed to be doing something in your flight controller, but when you flip the switch on your controller, nothing happens in the flight controller. And that may sound like a simple thing to fix, but there's actually a lot of things that could potentially go wrong. In this video, we're gonna go over some of them, and hopefully one of them will be the thing that's wrong with your switch. And the first thing I wanna show you is how to tell if the switch itself is broken. On all OpenTX and EdgeTX radios, if we press the Sys key, or on some radios you'll long press the model key, however it is that you get to the tools menu, and then page to the hardware screen, if you scroll down, there's an option debug at the very bottom of the screen. I'm using a Radio Master TX16S, so I have a color touch screen. If you have a radio with a smaller black and white screen, that option is also gonna be there. It's just gonna be a text option instead of this uh, sort of graphical display. Uh, if we go to debug keys, we can actually debug the switches. And what that means is, that we're gonna see the actual switch position that the radio thinks the switch is in, independent of all of the configuration things that could be screwing up your radio and making your switch not work. We're gonna look at the actual raw switch position. And I can see on this screen all of the switch positions for all of the different switches on this radio. And if I move one of the switches, we can see here switch SF going up and down. We can see here switch B going middle, up, and down. And if I move one of those switches and I don't see a corresponding movement here in the debug switches screen, then that means, sorry to say, your hardware is screwed up. Like, for example, maybe the switch itself is broken, maybe the wire going from the switch to the main board has gotten cut or crimped or pinched, something like that. In other words, you're gonna be opening up the back of your radio and trying to probably replace them, probably replace a switch is what you're going to end up doing. In some cases, you actually end up replacing the main board because in some cases, the main board on the radio is the thing that's broken and not the switch. But you won't know that until you swap the switch and then it still doesn't fix the problem and then you're like, ah! But hopefully, hopefully that works fine and something else is screwing up your switch. Let's take a look at some of the other things that could be causing this problem. The next place a switch could be messed up is here in the mixes screen. And the mixes screen is where you map a physical input like a switch or a stick or a knob to a channel uh, that is output to the receiver. So if I go down, it might be that I have never made a mix for this switch. I'm gonna look at the channels and I'm gonna look at the mixes here. And you can see I've got a mix here that is tied to switch SF, SD, SH, SC, and so on and so on. Uh, and if I haven't made a switch, a mixer with that switch, then that would be why we're not getting the output. We need to set it up. So let's go ahead down and let's make a new mix for a new switch as if we were starting from scratch. We'll just hit plus here. We'll add a new one on channel. Oh, I don't care. We're not really gonna use this anyway. So we'll just add it on channel nine. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna highlight source and click, and then I'm going to move the switch that I want to use to control this mix. And when I move that switch, it will automatically be picked up here in the menu. And now I have got a mix set up for this switch. And in fact, that's the correct way to do it. And if we look right here at the top of the screen, we can see the channel position as I move the switch going from high to middle to low. That's exactly what it should be. But there's a thing that some people do when they set up their switches that causes it to not work right. And here's what it is. We got this parameter right here called switch. And it sure seems like if we're trying to set up a switch, then we would use the switch parameter, doesn't it? It seems that way, but it's not true. And just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna hit switch here. And once again, I'm gonna move this same switch, SB, and we're gonna set SB to be the switch parameter. So now we've got both source and switch as SB. And what does that do? Look at my channel output here. Middle, nothing, middle. So now the switch refuses to go to the high position. It will go low, middle, middle instead of low, middle, high. The way that the switch parameter works is it causes the mixer line 
to be active only when the switch is in a certain position. So in this case, when switch SB is in the up position, this mixer is disabled and the channel goes to its default position of middle. In other words, this has had the effect of saying when the switch is in the up position, leave the channel in the middle. Uh, we, we would normally use the switch parameter to enable or disable a control based on the switch position. So when I have got this switch in the upper position, then this knob controls my landing gear or my flaps or something like that, or a gimbal that my camera is on. And when this switch is in the middle position, then the camera gimbal is disabled and this side control doesn't do anything. I'm just making up examples here. But the point is that if you want just a simple switch one, two, three, low, middle, high, then you will not use the switch parameter. You will disable that. And if you use the switch parameter, it would the switch parameter set the same as the source, you probably will get an unintended result that causes your switch to act like it's broken when it's really not. The next thing you can screw up your switches is a specific to ExpressLRS. So if you don't use ExpressLRS, there's a table of contents down in the video description or there are chapter markers in the timeline. You can just skip to the next one. Uh, in order to demonstrate this, I'm gonna press the sys key on the radio and I'm gonna launch the ExpressLRS script. And the option that I am concerned with is the switch mode option. Now that switch mode can be in either hybrid or wide. And uh, here is the effect of using hybrid or wide. So we can see that in the hybrid mode, channels six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 are only six positions of resolution. And if for some reason you were to set your switches up so that the aux channel tried to go to a position in between those six available positions, ExpressLRS would cause it to jump to one of those six available positions. And with a switch, you're probably not as likely to notice that this is going wrong. Since switches are usually either two position or three position, this is more likely to pop up if you're setting up like a knob or something where you want smooth, continuous motion throughout the whole channel. And instead it's going one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that six position option is in hybrid switch mode, which is the older version and which frankly, I don't recommend that anyone use. Rather, I think that you should set your switches to wide switch mode. And in wide switch mode, all of the channels have either 64 or 128 positions, which even if you're driving servos is actually probably enough resolution to have pretty good uh, usability. But certainly if you're setting up aux modes for switches, then that's more than enough resolution. By the way, notice that channel five is always two position and only two position because ExpressLRS expects channel five to be used for arming with 2000 being armed and 1000 being disarmed. So if you tried to set up channel five aux one to do something else, it simply would not do three position. It will only do two position and should be used for arming. Now let's take a look at a way to screw up your switches that is unique to Crossfire. And if you don't use Crossfire, once again, I've got a table of contents in the video description and chapter markers in the timeline down below that you can skip this section. So let's go into the TBS Agent Lite Lua script. And I do have a receiver powered up and bound over there. The, se the setting I'm gonna show you is in the receiver configuration. So I'll go down to Nano RX receiver and there I can change the channel map. Uh, and what this lets you do is remap the channels on the receiver so that channel five becomes channel six or channel six becomes channel seven and so forth and so forth. This is particularly useful if you have servos like in an airplane because you can rearrange the outputs to the servos without having to actually unplug the servos from the receiver. But if you somehow manage to go in and screw this up, your aux channel simply won't work or it'll output on the wrong aux channel. And I've seen a surprising number of cases where people have somehow misconfigured this and then are really confused why they've set up their switch on channel five, but it's on channel eight instead or something like that. Or maybe one switch controls both channel five and channel eight. Yep, you can do that as well. I just thought of another setting in OpenTX and EdgeTX that can make your switches not work right. Check this out. If I hold down the sys key to open the tools menu and then go back to that hardware screen that I showed you earlier, if we go down, we can actually change what the switches do. On the TX16S, I'm gonna just go down to switches and enter that. And we can change what type of switch it is. So for example, I could tell the radio 
that switch SB is not a three position switch, it's actually a two position switch. And then the radio would do its best. It would act like a two position switch even though it actually had three positions. If somehow this gets screwed up, it will cause your switches to behave oddly. And it's one of, like how would it get screwed up? I don't know, but I've seen situations where somebody's switch was not acting right and this was the thing that screwed it up. So now you know that exists. There's one more thing I want to show you about setting up switches in OpenTX and EdgeTX, and it doesn't really break the way the switch works, but it's a way that people commonly set switches up, and I think it's wrong. I'm going to tell you what it is just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon's a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. Uh, the, the amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. Just ask yourself how much value you get from the content that you watch, how much are you learning, are you entertained? Are you making better buying decisions from the reviews of, uh, that I do of products? However much you value that, go ahead down to patreon.com to the link below and sign up at that amount. You can stop whenever you want. There's no obligation, uh, but hopefully you continue feeling like I earn it. Uh, if today is the day you feel like I earned it, the link's down there. And if today isn't the day, I understand these things take time. Uh, maybe that day will come. Hope you keep watching in the meantime. The way that I think people set switches up wrong is they go to the inputs screen on the radio and they notice that the four main inputs for the four stick inputs, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder, they notice that they are all set up here in the input screen. And the without going into like too much detail about OpenTX and EdgeTX, the way that it works is that the physical input, the actual switch or stick, can be mapped to an input here, a logical input, and then that logical input can be fed into the mixes. So you can see that the input to this mixer is the aileron input, not the aileron control itself. And the input here on the input screen is the physical. See that little stick icon next to the aileron? Whereas if we go to the mixer screen, there's an input icon. So the aileron stick gets fed into the aileron input, which gets fed into the aileron mixer, which then gets fed into the output. And there's a reason why they do it this way. At each of the steps in that process, you can sort of tweak what's going on. For example, in the inputs screen, we can have a custom curve. Ooh, that's very cool. Oh, well, it turns out we can also have a custom curve in the mixer screen, so it's kind of dumb, but there's a little bit of redundancy everywhere in OpenTX and HTX. And the real reason that inputs are set up this way is that that's just how OpenTX and HTX set up all their models by default. We don't have to do it this way. In fact, in most cases, we probably shouldn't because all of the things that the input screen does, we usually aren't doing with a multi-rotor. We might with a plane. But some people take this too far, and when they set up their aux switches, they go to the input screen and they'll add a new input line uh, for each of their switches. So they'll go in and they'll set an input for switch SB, and then they'll head back out of there and we'll head over to the mixes and we'll create a new mix. And the input for the mix is not going to be switch SB, but it is going to be this new input that I made, input 05, which is switch SB. And there is simply no reason to do this. It's just an extra step. It'll work, but it's just more complicated and more steps and is completely unnecessary. When you set up switches, when you set up aux switches, don't create an input line. Just go to the mixes screen, make a new mix, and use the switch as the source for the mix directly. I can't, I really can't even think of a single reason why you'd ever need to do a switch, an aux switch on an input. So that is my last piece of advice for you. If you made it this far into this video, then you probably like learning things about OpenTX and EdgeTX. And I've got another video I think you're gonna love where I show you how to turn a momentary switch, like this momentary switch here, or even the trim switches, into a rolling end position rotary switch. This is especially useful if you've got a radio like the Tango 2, which has momentary switches, but doesn't have uh, enough, doesn't have any sort of knobs or potentiometers, uh, but it can be useful for any radio where you're trying to take advantage of extra momentary switches. I'm gonna put a link to that on screen uh, as a card. I've also got a video I did, which tells you when you're turning left or right 
too often and plays a sound. And it's a great example of advanced OpenTX and HTX programming. Really shows the power of these radios. I've got cards on screen for both of those if you want to check them out, as well as links in the video description below if for some reason you can't see the cards. I'll see you there.